Well, hey there, everybody. How's it going? Let's talk some hacky. What's going on? It's three games from Wednesday, and then we get to talk about Make-A-Wish Day, 11-11 day. There's also 11 games on 11-11. I believe that's right here, 11. Yep, there's 11 games tomorrow, today. Whatever. Let's talk about it. Hey, guess what? Uh, algorithm? Remember, always listen to the algorithm. Never listen to me. Never listen to me. Always listen to the algorithm. That's what you're supposed to do. Algorithm said Toronto was slightly going to win this game against Philadelphia. They won 3 nothing. It's a win. It said that Nashville and underdog was going to win. They, they won. Uh, it said that Minnesota was going to win. They won. I said bet Arizona, bet Nashville, and bet Philadelphia because they're all underdogs. Uh, you win one of them. I did this, actually. Uh, small amounts. I lost money on this three. Had I just put it all on Nashville, we would have won it all. That, that, that was another option. Uh, but if you also tr trusted the algorithm on which the favorites were, notice that the, the margins slightly change a little bit when we remove the scores from the game. So let, let's move these down for a second so that we get them out of here. And then you can see what the true... Actually, we can't even have them there because it might screw up a win-loss for tomorrow. But uh, so... It's good. the margins too. The margin was only seven percent for Toronto, but they did win. This was twenty-seven percent. This was a bigger margin, and apparently they won more. So the point is, is uh, let's back up. Okay, so it's a three and O day basically, um, which is which is funny. All right, it's about time, and and I really like the Nashville game and getting the score almost exactly right is pretty awesome. So great, now. What does that mean? Nothing really. Tomorrow we may lose all the games. And I still believe that betting the underdogs in most instances is basically almost all you should do. But but there's also the empirical data that we're doing here and the, the true matchup about which team strength-wise should be better. And that is valuable, so we'll go over both here on Go Over These 11 Games. Goalies may not be right. Uh, I'd like to teach everybody how to update goaltenders. The answer is you got to put the goalie's name right here. So if, for example, I believe Vanacek is hurt. I was I was told that Vanacek is hurt. It might be Samsonov, even though Roto Wires got it in the opposite direction. If you change the goalie right here to to the actual name, it will change everything. You know, Vicek. I can't spell Vanacek right. No way. Oh my God! I spelled his name right. That's the funniest thing ever. Okay, so it could be that, and and things would change, and then you'd have to copy this and replace it where it is in the cube right here. That's the way. You can't just change the name right here because it doesn't doesn't make the true adjustment. So anyway, um, that's kind of how it works when it, when it comes to goaltenders and stuff. Now, what I would like to say about tomorrow or today being Veterans Day, right? Thursday, we're talking? We're, we're Thursday, right? Yeah, it's Thursday. So... You'd have to change some goalies to get true representations, but let's talk in, in theory in general about decent bets and, and what games to go over, and then that'll be my hockey video for the entire day of the 11. Well, we have a pick rank thing. Algorithm's supposed to be smart. It says number one pick is LA. They're also only minus 110. It's because Ottawa's a pretty bad team and really bad with Matt Murray. And LA's playing better. Really reasonable line. It's not, a, it's not an underdog line, but boy, if you trust the algorithm... Um, it says take them, and it's very reasonable, okay? How about pick number two? It's Florida over Pittsburgh. F Notice how Florida has dropped off recently, so that they're, they're still getting a big margin here because Pittsburgh's really weak with Tristan Jerry. Pittsburgh's playing awful, um, and that line's reasonable, okay? Third pick of the day is Anaheim over Seattle. Makes a lot of sense. Anaheim playing pretty good. Really good, actually. And an underdog line. That's phenomenal. That's actually that, that's the pick, that's the line of the day, right? Third pick of the day is plus 146. That's phenomenal. Sixth pick of the day is plus 155. Vancouver over Colorado. I have something to say about this game because I think Darcy Kemper is not a very good goaltender. He, he's got a 63% rating. That's not not great. And Nathan McKinnon's out for a few weeks with something. I think this team's problem is actually Darcy Kemper related. I was trying to figure out what's happening with them, and I was looking at his goalie stats. He's got a 0.91% save percentage, I believe. And, and I, I, I just think that, that as long as he's in here, you can expect this team to lose games they shouldn't. 
Uh, I suspect. I, I haven't watched too much Colorado, but that's what I'm getting to the vibe I'm getting on why they're not winning. Because I was like, why? I was like with Grubauer last year, they were doing better. Now you have Grubauer fighting it, you know, with the Kraken. But anyway, let's talk about each game, though, also. Edmonton and Boston, it's got an underdog line, and it's the fifth pick of the day, and it likes Edmonton. So if you're going to do the strategy, which I will do this, because I think it is mathematically positive EV, as they say. Underdog lines that the algorithm favors on a, on the new margin are, are are doing really well recently, and they make a lot of sense. Which is you got a good line anyway, and you think the team's supposed to win. Now a lot of them are on the road, so maybe we're not taking into account home and away enough. But I don't think home and away matters in hockey, where the bounces are. Honestly, uh, it, it's almost like fans are fans, and whether you're getting booed or cheered, it doesn't matter. You're just happy to be playing. So. So in, in that strategy of taking the underdog that's favored, the, the picks that are like that are Edmonton, right? Anaheim at plus 146. What else we got? Not this game because it likes Calgary as a favorite over Montreal. Not I mean, this is a minus 110, but it's, <clears throat> it's a reasonable line. It's the number one pick of the day with LA. Jersey, no, this is a toss-up game, so I'd say it's not worth it at only plus 115. Pit, this wants to be Florida, but it's all, it's minus one twenty. Unfortunately, uh, Washington and Detroit toss up game with Samsonov. I smell goals in this game. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this game and the goals in this game. So let's do that real quick. Actually, hold on. Let's finish. See if there's any more underdogs that it likes. Nashville. No, it doesn't like Nashville over St. Louis. How about that? I thought I figured it would almost like it's because Riddich may be going. Watch this goaltender situation. That might be the problem. But they're plus 150. If you like the all underdog line, that's a good all underdog pick right there. Because it might not be Bennington. I think it is Bennington, but eh, I don't know. Probably that, that's an interesting plus 150, even though they just played. San Jose at Winnipeg, a toss up game and plus 158. Says take take San Jose, right? <laughs> but they're they're not favored, but you know, Vancouver favored here at plus 155 over Colorado, right? That's the other one. So the big ones where the algorithm actually favors a team, even if the margin is slight, are Anaheim. Yep. Anaheim, Vancouver. Almost San Jose. Edmonton. And that's it. Right? So Edmonton, Vancouver, and Anaheim. Man, and San Jose was one and a half almost. It's, it's a lot, there's a lot of interesting things to play today uh, that have good lines. Um, now, I wanted to do over-unders real quick. Let's do subtotals. Where's the highest scoring? Oh, God. What did I break? Oh, I don't have subtotal there. Yikes. Sorry. I've been messing around with this interface. That doesn't work right now. Um, let's see if this fixes itself. Yes. Yeah, so um, we'll have to do it in our heads. Um, well, not just a disparity in goals so much because that's kind of a fault of the algorithm's projections this early in the season. But I I'm really wanting to go over this game of 7.6 goals between Washington and Detroit with two goaltenders that are orange here. Okay, 63 and 61. Like, where else do you have bad goaltenders that are both orange or red? This is bad. LA and Ottawa says a lot of goals, right? Um, so, yeah, everyone else is kind of colored, at least with somebody greener, you know? This is getting kind of bad at Vancouver and Colorado, but this is supposed to be a weaker goaltender game. I think Vanna checks out, so... Negovic can be scored on the caps. Ovechkin looking to pass everybody. He's just he's like, I want to catch Gretzky next week. He just won't stop, right? So the over here seems like a lot of fun and also a good chance because a lot of factors are pointing to that, right? Same thing in this Ottawa game, right? Except that Ottawa can't score much. and But Cal Peterson's not really good. Okay, he's not quick. So there should be goals in this game too. This probably gets to be like, you know, like four, four, five, three, five, two, game five, something like that. So I think you hit both overs in that game, but both overs in those games. 
And I guess that's enough hockey talk as it's all changed. But it's worth going over. It's certainly providing something. I know I know we're not going to go 11-0 and tomorrow. That would be amazing. Um, I know that some underdogs are going to win that shouldn't. And, like, you know, Nashville will win here. And I'll be like, see, I told you we maybe should have taken that even though we didn't put it on there. The answer is it's not favored by the algorithm. So if, let's try to make consistent underdog picks favored by the algorithm. That's a nice uh, inclusion you know, thing that it has to be an underdog line. Because then we're like, we're like, you know, essentially beating the odds makers. We're like, no, odds makers, you should have had Vancouver favored. No, odds makers, you should have had Anaheim favored. No, odds makers, you should have had Edmonton favored. What were you thinking? And and when we hit like all three of those and we keep doing that over, over time and time again, then people realize that, well, well, obviously there's some something that's going on in the stats that is that is doing better than the odds makers. That's kind of what I shoot for here. All right, guys. Good luck, everyone. May Edmonton, Vancouver, and Anaheim win tomorrow, and may there be nine goals in the Washington-Detroit game. Good luck. May your picks be winning.